What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're talking about common pad holding mistakes that I see many people make, especially when they're at that beginner intermediate level. I have six points for you. After I roll the intro, I'm gonna break down each and hopefully at the end of this episode, you will not be making any of these common errors. All right, first off, you guys are probably looking at the pads going, what the heck, why does he have two different ones? I just like holding two different ones. I find for the jab, this hand's a little faster with this tiny hybrid tie pad, and then I have the full size one on the other arm. It's just my preference. But this won't change any aspect of this video and the way that people hold pads and generally make mistakes. So let's move in to point number one. And the big thing that I notice a lot of people do when they're starting off is they have their hands way out here. Jab, jab, cross, jab, cross, hook. And when you see somebody doing that, basically what they're asking you to do is throw the jab over here, the cross over here, the hook over here, and the head, or the representation of the head, is far too wide. We don't want to be hitting this far apart, we want to be hitting about that far apart, because people's heads are not that big. So when I'm holding, generally, I'm like this. I get the hands as tight together as I can to make sure people aren't having to overextend from one side to the other. It can also cause for sloppy hooks to happen, because if I go one, two, three, and people have to reach way over here, their tech technique is going to suffer. So always think straight down the middle, straight down the middle, straight down the middle. Doesn't matter what kind of punch I hold, I want to make sure it's right down the direct middle aligned between my partner and myself. The next common mistake I often see is people not putting some impact back into the pad. If you're going to throw a cross at me and I just hold my arm here and my arm's like a noodle, when you hit it, it's just going to bounce back. And what can happen is the person throwing the shot goes to hit something solid, and then all of a sudden that solid object is gone, and they overstretch their arm. They hyperextend at the elbow. So what we need to keep in mind is if I'm holding for somebody and I ask for jab cross, I give just a little pop, just a little pushback in the punch to make sure when they hit, they don't have a super soft target that is gonna damage them. And then keep in mind also that you can push too hard. If every time somebody punches, I'm going like that, you can damage your partner's wrist. So you need to find that sort of fine balance in between where you just give a little bit of impact and it takes time and it takes skill. Keep in mind that being a good pad holder is almost as difficult as learning the whole sport from the beginning up. You can learn all the techniques, learn all the strategic moves, all this sort of stuff, and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I'm feeling really advanced, really good, and then you put on a pair of pads and you're going, ooh, ooh, I'm not great at this. Well, that's okay. It does take time, it does take skill, and everything I'm showing you today will help you become a better pad holder so much faster. And guys, if you appreciate this episode, if you think it's gonna help you, please give the video a like and let's move on to our next point. And for that, we are talking about basically not making the round flow by creating combos that are too difficult. I see this all the time, especially when I have kids in my program and they're holding pads for the first few times and they say something to their partner like, jab cross, hook cross, upper cross. And they just both sort of look at each other and nobody really knows what to do because nobody can remember it and it's just too advanced a combo. So what you want to start with is super basic. Just keep to the basics at first. You just put a hand up and somebody jabs. Cross, hook, uppercut, then maybe one, two, one, two. And then if you want, you can start going into threes. For the threes, you wanna call out the combo beforehand. Jab, cross, hook, give them a second to think about it and then lift it up so they can move in. Next time, maybe jab, cross, upper cross, give them a second, ba 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 bum. And we build up bit by bit, but we don't keep the pace of the round slow by giving somebody a super long combo like jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, hook, cross, hook. I can figure that out, jab, cross, jab, cross, hook, hook, cross, hook. But for most people, they'd be going, what the heck? So we have to make sure we're keeping our combos small, concise, and we're keeping the pace of the round very fast. Next up, and specifically for tie pads, when we're holding round kicks, so often I see people do this elbows tight together and they're holding like this and then when they take impact they get knocked backwards and it looks like it's so unpleasant to hold the kicks. What you need to make sure you're doing when you're holding for round kicks is let your elbows just flare out. It's so much more comfortable here. This feels terrible. This is so much more comfortable. It's also going to allow you to absorb the kick 
across the entire leg as opposed to going like this where there's just going to be a small portion of the leg which actually lands. So I spread it out. I get my body nice and strong. I have more impact that I can drive into this kick. And then from there, if you ask somebody for 10 kicks, you know, you're at the end of the round and you're doing 10 and 10 or something, bang, 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 it's so much easier than in here. And this is not just beginners who are making this mistake. I've seen many high level coaches hold with their elbows tucked in, hold for me like that, and it does not work. And I knock them backwards and they become a mediocre pad holder, at least for multiple round kicks, because they forget this little simple tip. Elbows flared out. Watch a pad holder from Thailand and find me one guy who holds like this. You're probably gonna have a lot of trouble doing that. It's like that, all right? The much better, much more effective way to hold for round kicks. Doesn't matter what level it's at, just keep those elbows flared out just a little bit. Another common error is forgetting about footwork for your partner. And people do this by, as the pad holder, moving into their partner. If I'm standing here and my hands are up and I'm ready to throw some punches and my pad holder moves to me, then I don't have to initiate any footwork. So as the pad holder, make sure you don't move to your partner and then go jab, cross, hook. You stand out here out of range, make sure they're out of your jab range, and then you say jab, cross, hook. You put your hands up and they have to move to you. This is going to allow them to make sure they work their footwork in and out. And moving on to our next point, which ties into this one, we make sure we incorporate defense. It's not all about offense. So at the end of my combo, if I step in and I go one, two, three, and my pad holder does nothing, then I don't have to worry about moving. But if he swings at me, then I have to make sure I step out. When it, now he swings and I'm gone, I go, whoa, that footwork was very important. And then also for, in terms of defense, if I'm just holding, I'm just always offense, offense, offense then my partner is not going to get any better at their defense. So I have to do stuff like jab cross and then swing a pad at them. Maybe I start off and I swing a pad and then I have them do a counter shot. Do not forget about the defensive aspect of pad work. It should probably be about 75% offense and 25% defense. You will notice this when you see me do pads with my pad holder or with my brother. We make sure there is lots of defense for me happening and it makes me that much better. It makes the pad work that much more like a real fight, which will help you in competition or in the gym when you are sparring. So guys, those are my main tips on how to get better at pad holding and how to avoid the common mistakes I usually see when I'm watching others hold pads for training partners. Most of you guys are part of a gym or have training partners you're working with. Please share this video with them. Make sure everybody that you know, everybody who's at your gym is not making any of these mistakes and is gonna be a better pad holder for you or anybody else they ever hold for. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, if you thought it was gonna be helpful, please give the video a like. If you haven't already, join the channel and get subscribed for lots of content coming at you daily right now. As always guys, train hard. I'll see you back here soon for another video.